as Dr. Fumega said, we are gonna take a deeper dive now into the Caribbean results, those eight countries that participated in uh, this survey. And to give us a, a broader landscape of where the Caribbean stacked up, we have Dr. Susanna Russell, the Global Data Barometer Regional Coordinator at the Caribbean Open Institute, who's joining us to walk us through the Caribbean results. Dr. Russell. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Then we can get started. So thank you again. I am Susanna Russell. I worked alongside Lila and Maurice McNaughton here at the MSBM and we were the regional hub, the coordinator for the Caribbean. So we're just going to take a deeper dive into the results. So the GDB published first edition, as Silvana said, it involved 109 countries. So really, really a lot of data. So we looked at eight Caribbean countries and we're just going to discuss the findings. But Silvana mentioned that the premise of the barometer was about data for the public good. So what do we mean by data for the public good? Now, data clearly is a source of power. Dr. McBean mentioned that. It can be used for private gain. It can also be used to limit freedom. But data can also be used for the public good. When you use data for the public good, you can use it as a source of tackling social challenges, enabling collaborations, and more importantly, for improving transparency and accountability all around. I won't take you through the GDB tool because I think Silvana did a fantastic job. The tool hinges on four pillars, governance, capability, availability, and the use the impact. So when we talk about governance, what do we mean? So what are the types of measures that were included in each? When we talk about governance, governance is concerned with whether there are rules, processes, institutions in place, safeguard against the misuse of data. So pretty much looking at the country's legal and policy frameworks that support data ecosystems. When we talk about capability, the measures we're interested in are you know, whether the country has the right connectivity, skills, um, the means, the institutional capacity to create, share, and use data. So I just want you guys to kind of understand some of the measures that were involved in um, coming up with these four pillars. So governance and capability look at the country level context. And then there were seven thematic modules. The seven were think, climate action, health and COVID, um, public procurement, public financing, land, company information, and political integrity. And so these themes were used to explore the pillars of availability, use, and impact. And some were also used to explore governance and capabilities. So when we talk about the availability of data, we want to think about, you know, the data actually exist? It is, is it available? In what condition or what is the quality of the data if it is available? Is it shared? Is it open, mean that everybody can access the data? Or do you have to pay to get access to that data? Use and impact is concerned with finding evidence of how you're actually using the data and whether that is having an impact. Yes? So there are three broad scores per country. There's an overall score, which gives you the performance of the country across all the pillars. And then you have the individual pillar score. So it's going to be for governance, capability, availability, use and impact for each country. And then the module scores, remember there were nine modules, two core modules that would cover governance and capability and seven thematic modules. Now, as Silvana explained, each pillar or module is scored on a scale of zero to 100. 100 clearly is best practice. That's your, your benchmark. 
So when you get a score, that gap is representing the gap between the current performance of the country and the ideal. So in this case, a bigger number is better. Yeah, it means that it's um, a smaller gap. So let's just dive into some of the results. So eight Caribbean countries participated in this first edition. Bahamas, Belize, Dominican Republic, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago. Now the data sets are vast. So I can only summarize here and like Silvana, hopefully this will just whet your appetite and you would want to go on the website and really explore you know, in depth because the utility of the tool is when you get down to the granular details, when you can actually start to look at the strengths and weaknesses of each country. So let's talk about the overall country scores first. So the average global score, so the average for the 109 countries was 34. And these were the overall country scores for the eight Caribbean countries. Um, Dominican Republic is the only country in the region so far that ranks higher than the global average of 34. Jamaica is not so bad, it's 31, so close enough to 34. But then if you look at Haiti and Guyana, you realize that they have some ways to go. Haiti scored an overall score of eight and Guyana an overall score of 11. Now let's look at the pillar scores. So there are four pillars, governance, capability, availability, use and impact. So what I did was just, I'm just giving you the Caribbean score. So if you want to see the pillar scores for each of the eight countries, then you can visit the website and start to dive into the data set, yes? So the green bars represent the global average and then the red bars will tell you the Caribbean averages. So as it relates to the lowest um, overall pillar score, it would be use and impact for the Caribbean. Not entirely surprising because it is a pillar with the lowest global average, 22. Availability of data is also fairly low, 17. The overall average is 30. Again, guys, remember it's not um, ranking, it's just looking at where you are and the strengths and weaknesses and what you need, the actions that can be taken um, to improve your position. So I can't go through all the modules, but I'll go through the two core modules and some of the thematic modules. As again, this is where you know it starts to get interesting because this is where you can literally start to sift out the strengths and weaknesses for each country. So let's look at the overall governance modules. And just to give you a sense of some of the data that was collected to evaluate governance, we looked at things like data accessibility frameworks, data management frameworks, data sharing frameworks, data protection laws, open data policy. So if you look at data sharing frameworks, it is saying, do, do the countries in the region have some framework? And when we talk about framework, we're talking about policies, laws, guidance. Um, do these frameworks exist to allow us to share data? So business sharing data with businesses, businesses sharing data with government, government sharing data with government. And if you look, at the screen, you'll realize that all eight countries scored zero. So there are no data sharing frameworks, no policies, no laws, no regulations, no guidance on data sharing in the region. Data accessibility is also an issue. And what we mean by data accessibility is that if you want to be truly inclusive, then data must be accessible for everybody. And your country is constructed of many different citizens, some with disabilities. So if you're going to make data accessible, you have to consider persons with disability. So far, only St. Lucia and Trinidad have frameworks that say you have to make data accessible for persons with disabilities. Um, data protection laws. So who are there frameworks, policies, anything in place to protect citizens' data? And yes, not doing so badly on data protection. The average globally is 60. And if you look at the scores, 
Bahamas has a really, really strong data protection law um, framework, 90 out of a possible 100. Um, Jamaica is not bad, 80. Um, no data protection laws and framework for Guyana and Haiti. So clearly that is a weakness that they need to address. So this is how you will look at the factors. Now clearly, I can't go through all the measures for all the modules. So just to set it up so you know that for each of the modules, there are measures behind these modules that will dictate the score. So if you look at overall governance, then Guyana and Haiti for this module scored zero, and you can see where the other countries are. Now, how can the region improve data governance? Then clearly you need to have some data protection and governance framework. There are countries in the region that have these frameworks. Guyana and Haiti are two countries with none. So clearly they need to put some form of data protection framework in place to manage the risks of data misuse. Another measure was open data policy. Um, most countries still do not have a cabinet approved open data policy. I need to mention something here. So if you look, you see, Jamaica got a score of zero for having an open, not having an open data policy. Now, Silvana mentioned that the period of the study was from May the 1st, 2019 to May the 1st, 2021. Now, Jamaica has a cabinet approved open data policy, but that policy was approved by the cabinet in July of 2021. And so because it's outside of the study period, then it scored zero. So in the next edition of the barometer, then clearly Jamaica would get some points. Data inclusivity, as I said, to be truly inclusive, data for public good should ensure that the data and platforms are accessible to people with disabilities. So that's an area that the region needs to improve. The other module I'm going to look at is capabilities. Now remember that capabilities measure whether the country has the means, connectivity, skills, institutional capacity to create, share, and use data. 14 measures were used to um, assess capabilities. Can't go through them all here. Again, you can get them on the website. But some of these measures included internet access, digital skills, digital government, civil service training, government online services, and open data initiatives. Now, the results for the region, it, make, it is mixed. Um, the overall average is global average is 49. And you can see that the region is not doing too badly. Dominican Republic is at 47, close to the global average. The other countries are in the high 30s, except for Haiti, that is at 17. Yes? Now, in terms of internet connectivity, the results say that it's mixed across the region. However, um, when it comes on to the use of digital tools and digital skills, the region on the whole, except for Haiti, surpassed the global average. However, there's um, some weaknesses. Again, you can dive into these um, deeper from the data set. When it comes on to civil servants, data literacy. So training, you know, if the governments are provide, um, across the region are providing training for civil service in terms of data literacy, there was little evidence that the government was providing this sort of training. So that is something that you countries can look at. So on the whole, how can countries in the region improve their data capabilities? One thing is to sustain an institutionalized capacity building. So you want to have a sustained program for training and support around the data collection. Also countries need to strengthen their nat um, national statistical offices and any institutions that deal with data and develop leadership and strategy where of course, this is going to require some high level political leadership to ensure that the country has the skills, connectivity, the institutions and the freedoms and liberties for data to be governed and used for the public. So let's look at, I just look at a couple of the thematic modules. And remember the thematic modules really are sectors, sector data looking primarily at, you know, whether the data is available and the quality of the data that is available and how this data 
is used and the impact of this data. So one of the themes was health and COVID-19. Um, COVID the global average was 40. And if you look at the scores, you can see DOMREP is the only country that surpassed the global average. DOMREP got a score of 54. Haiti and Guyana have some ways to go. The scores were fairly low, seven and eight respectively. And some of the data, the measures that were included in health and COVID were measures like, you know, vital stats data. Are these data available? Marriages, divorce, deaths, fetal deaths. Um, when it comes on to real-time healthcare system capacity, especially in a pandemic, you know, do you have data available for citizens so they can see the availability, availability of vaccines, the number of hospital beds available. So these were the um, sort of data measures that were used for health and COVID-19, yes? Of course, the results would show, not surprisingly, that there was little real-time healthcare capacity data. So while a lot of the data, um, especially on COVID-19, the data was present, it was backward looking, yeah? Not real time data. What about climate action? So the measures, three measures were used to evaluate the availability of climate action data. So emissions data, biodiversity data, and vulnerability data. The global average was 27. Um, Trinidad and Tobago scored an overall 29 on climate action. So there's some work to be done in making this data available. St. Lucia scored eight, Haiti scored eight, Guyana scored two. So remember it, the maximum is a hundred, yeah? So two, which means that you have a long way to go. And remember the hundred is an ID. So across the region on the whole, data to support climate action appears to be scarce and not readily available. What about political integrity? No, political integrity was a big module. There were several measures for political integrity. So some of the data that we looked for um, included things like asset declaration, um, political finance data. Are these readily available online? Um, lobbying, remember it's across the board for all countries, not just the Caribbean. So even though we don't have real lobbying taking place, in the Caribbean, it's popular in other countries. Um, right to information framework and data, are these available? And the global average was 27. Jamaica, Omrep, Belize surpassed the global average when it comes on to political integrity data. So countries like St. Lucia, Haiti, Guyana still have some way to go in making a lot of these data um, available. Most countries, however, have no data available for asset declaration, no data on political finance um, data, no political finance information. And remember, politicians are supposed to have these data available. The framework exists, but the data is not readily available. Again, imagine if this data was available. It's going to aid transparency and accountability. Wrapping up now, what about public financing? That was another module. And two measures were used to look at public financing, budget and spending data, and whether there were laws available to ensure the publication of this data. The global average was 49. DOMREP scored 65. Um, Jamaica was pretty close to the global average scoring 43. So Domrec far exceeds the global average and all countries except St. Lucia have open budget and spending data available. Meaning citizens can go online and look at the budget and spending data for, um, for, for the government. And this is probably not surprising because there was a push a couple of years back on um, for open budgeting. And so I think a lot of countries really jumped on board and have this data available. Now, how can countries improve data availability? Well, one way to do that 
is to really dive down into the GDB scores to identify specific areas for improvement. Now, only seven themes or sectors were looked at um, for this edition. We know that tourism is particularly important to the Caribbean region. So Silvana, we intend to be a part of this initiative going forward. And I'm sure Maurice will agree that the Caribbean Open Institute will advocate actively to have tourism as um, a thematic module in the next editions of the barometer. And of course you want to refresh data publishing. So you do have countries that have open data, um, open data portals. So for example, Jamaica. Jamaica has an open data portal that you can go online and get access to data. It's there, it's open. However, the data sets are not regularly updated. And so of course that is going to limit the usefulness. The last pillar is use and impact. So how are we using the data and the impact of the data? Clearly, this is notoriously difficult to measure, but the barometer used four measures to um, measure use and impact. Across the globe, the averages were fairly low and was also fairly low for the Caribbean region. Only Jamaica had uses to report on all four measures. And even when you could um, report on uses, the, there was no sustained widespread use of the data, even if the data was available. You would find one-off uses, so isolated cases, a civic, um, a civil society organization may be using the data. Some journalists may be using the available data. Um, some academic may be using the data for research. But regionally, there is no widespread use of data. Now, one recommendation from us is that clearly governments across the region can lead by example. So make use of your own data and increase the availability and the transparency of this data and that will in turn and, um, encourage the public to use the data. So why the barometer? How do you use it? As Silvana said, it's um, a flagship report. It was launched um, recently. And we are from that global report, we want to pull out the Caribbean results and then do a Caribbean report that we will make available soon either on the Caribbean Open Institute's website um, and also at MSBM website. Now, I hope I would have, you know, just your appetite you now is, you know, you want to really go and play with the data and drill down into the data. The website is interactive. So you can go and really take a dive deep into the country, the indicators, the sectors, the pillars. So you can see for each country, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Fain mentioned that all the data sets that we have, everything for this project is in open data format. When it means open, it means that you have the raw data. The, everything that the researchers would have collected is there, you, along with all the qualitative evidence, everything is there for you to access. And we're hoping that you would use this data set, the results, you know, for action to shape policies and targets, not just for governments, but for businesses. And we're not leaving out academics. Of course, academics can use the data for research to explore relationships. So for example, suppose you want to find out if different government frame, um, governance frameworks will shape data availability and use, then the data set is there for you to use. Um, thank you guys for listening. Hope that you know you're not so fascinated that you will go and visit the website. It's on the screen that you can really look at the data, take your time and play with it, right? And hopefully we can have some discussion in the question and answer if there's any further information that you need. Thanks once again.